the normal nerve trunk is big and fat and juicy. But up here, one of these bones has slipped. That's called a subluxation. Now, when that happens, the disc becomes squeezed and pinched off and irritated, begins to degenerate and disintegrate. This is often called a slip disc, sometimes called a herniated disc. Usually both terms are wrong. In actual fact, what's happened most of the time is that the bone has slipped out of place. See how it's not lined up with the one above and the one below? That's called a subluxation. And the worst thing that it does is not to the disc, but to the nerve trunk. Because the opening is now made smaller, this nerve trunk is inflamed and irritated and damaged. Whatever organ is at the end of this poor sick nerve is not going to work right. Let me explain it this way. Did you ever wonder what is the difference between a living, breathing, walking, talking, healthy human being and a corpse? Chemically, they're the same. But if I cut my finger, it heals. And if I cut a corpse, it doesn't. I put food into my living body, and the body converts that living food into eye tissue that can see. I put the same food in the corpse, and it rots. Why? Well, apparently my body has this mysterious something called life. And it, one of its manifestations is life energy. It's a sort of electrical energy that is generated in the brain. In one of our large medical colleges recently, an experiment was done in which they tapped the brain energy of a living rabbit. They put electrodes into the rabbit's head, and the electricity that they gathered from that, they used to run a radio. A radio that worked as long as it had that particular form of electricity. But because it was drawing the life energy from the rabbit, the rabbit died. And then the radio stopped. So they plugged in another rabbit, and it worked again. And what they were proving was that the energy from the brain that makes you alive is very similar to electricity. And every organ in your body is rather like an electric appliance. It doesn't work unless it has power. When Governor Wallace of Alabama was shot recently, damage was done to his spinal cord, preventing the flow of energy from the brain over some of those nerves and from the point that he was shot. From there on down, he was paralyzed. He will heal again. He'll be normal again if his nerves heal. If the nerves don't heal, he'll never heal. In other words, the nerves are the only carriers of that kind of life energy. And in order for your organs to get a good nerve supply, it has to come from the brain over the nerves. When there is a subluxation, as we showed you before, that life energy is choked off, and the poor organ at the other end gets a damaged or partial nerve supply. Now, here we have a light bulb that has no electricity at all. And, of course, having no electricity, it doesn't work. There's nothing wrong with the light bulb. I could give it aspirin, and it wouldn't work. I could give it an injection. I could give it surgery. I could cover it in goose grease, and it still wouldn't work. The thing that it needs is electricity. When it has power, it works. There was nothing wrong with it to start with. Every organ in your body is like that light bulb. It needs electricity. And the only place it gets it is from the brain, over the nerve. If we were to cut down its electrical supply, the organ wouldn't work. If you cut the nerve supply to any organ, it doesn't work. Fortunately, nature protects us by giving most organs multiple nerve supply. So you can cut one nerve, and the organ still gets a nerve supply from elsewhere. But one other thing could happen in the body, as could happen to this light bulb. Instead of turning the electricity either on or off, I could perhaps fix up a rheostat to cut down on the electricity going to the light bulb. Then it would still work, but not quite as well. With only half power, it only works at half efficiency. And that's exactly what happens in your body when you suffer a subluxation. It cuts down the flow of energy passing from the brain over those nerves. Everything in this body is made to measure. And only when these bones are perfectly lined up is the opening exactly the right shape and size to fully conduct the nerve and all of the energy over that nerve. If one of those bones slips, causing a subluxation, it chokes off the flow of life energy 
to some organ. And all the pills, powders, and potions in the world will never make an organ work properly again as long as its life energy is choked off. If you have cells in your body right now working at that kind of power, you'll never be healthy again. Those cells will never be healthy again. Medicine has spent thousands of years trying to cure those sick cells. Chiropractic says, let the sick cells die. They're only going to last a few weeks or a few months anyway. Let them die. When they do, they're going to be replaced by new cells. Now, if the new cells come in also with half power, then you're going to stay sick. The way to end that problem would be to get the pressure taken off of the nerve, get the power turned back on again, and you could have all of the organs gradually replacing themselves, and you would heal. As healthy, strong cells replace old, sick ones, you come back to life and health, and you give the credit to whatever doctor you happen to be going to. You could say, it was the pills that I took. It was the vitamins that I swallowed. It was the special diet that I went on. It was the chiropractic adjustment. But it was none of those things. Only one thing heals, the power of life itself within your body. And if that power is choked off, then you will never heal. Unfortunately, when that power does get choked off, most of us don't know about it. It probably happens when we're quite young. Perhaps it was a fall off a tricycle when you're three years old. If you fell off a tricycle at age three, cutting down the nerve supply to your heart, you're not going to have a heart attack at age three. The heart can bear up with this kind of energy, maybe 90% of its energy. And you grow up thinking, my heart's fine. You go for an examination, and the doctor tells you, your heart's fine. You go for an insurance checkup, and everybody says, your heart's fine. But after 20 or 30 years of bearing up under great strain, then the heart can't handle it. And one day, somebody's out pushing his car, perfectly healthy, and he suddenly drops dead of a heart attack. And everybody says, gee, it's funny. He never did that before. He was perfectly healthy. Never had a sick day in his life. And then suddenly dropped dead of a heart attack. In actual fact, he had lots of sick days, but they weren't sick enough for him to see. He was just going through life with the power partially turned off. And sometimes, when you have little accidents, you stop in your car at a stop sign, perhaps somebody hits your car from behind, and you feel fine afterwards. The power is cut down so little that you can't feel the difference. You couldn't even see the difference on the light bulb. And we cut it down again, and you don't feel any difference. And as I sit here talking to you, gradually the power could be cut down so slowly, step by step, that at no time would you notice the power is going down. There's no specific incident where one day you feel well and another day you feel sick. And day by day, people meet you on the street and they say, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. Compared with what? Well, compared with how I was yesterday. And you compare yourself with how you were 10 years ago and you say, well, I'm getting old. Your body's supposed to last you 120 to 150 years. You've got the nerve to sit there at age 55 and say, I'm getting old? You're not even halfway home yet. You see, we had a patient who went to a doctor because his knee hurt him. And he said, doctor, my knee's hurting, it's all swelled up. And the man was 74 years of age. The doctor examined him, he said, well, you've got to expect that kind of thing at your age. He said, yes, but doc, the other leg's just as old. How come it doesn't hurt? And we go through life blaming sickness and disease on old age, when in actual fact what's happened is the power has been cut down gradually and slowly over the years. So slowly, so quietly, we haven't known anything's wrong. And then you go into a chiropractor for the first time, and what does he do? He doesn't cure your disease. He doesn't even treat your disease. He doesn't even need to know what your disease is. Chiropractor does one thing. He examines that spine with his hands, with his instruments, with his x-rays, and he finds those minute areas where one bone is misaligned, pinching off nerves, or several bones are misaligned, pinching off nerves. Gradually, step by step, he eases the bones gently back into place. He can't move in one minute what's been slipping out of place gradually for 30 years. It may take time to gradually rehabilitate the spine. It's like an orthodontist trying to move teeth. It has to be done gradually, gently, over a period of time to rehabilitate and allow all of those nerves to come back to life. 
And then you, who've been going through life with the power choked off, not even knowing it, now suddenly get a burst of energy that you didn't know you had. And I love to hear chiropractic patients talk. People who were never sick, and they go to a chiropractor, and after a while they say, you know, I feel much better, Doc. Much better than what? You weren't sick. Yeah, I know, but I feel better now. The only side effect of chiropractic is improved health. When the power gets turned on, there are no negatives, there is no damage. Remember this, every pill, every medication, every drug you take, even those that may be necessary to save life, are damaging the body while they're doing it. There's no such thing as a drug or a medication that does not do harm. That's why last year the Food and Drug Administration was forced to take off the market 1,400 commonly used drugs and medications that have been around for 15 and 20 years, and you and your parents were given those drugs and told they make you healthy. Now we find they not only don't make you healthy, they actually made you sick. So they've taken them off the market and replaced them with 1,400 new ones, which they'll take off the market 10 years from now for the same reason. Every drug, every medication, every treatment of disease damages the body. The only thing that does not damage the body is natural health. Turning the power back on makes you stronger, healthier in every respect. Now, there's only one thing left to be discussed. When should you see a chiropractor? Is it for backaches? Is it for headaches? Is it for cancer? And the answer is it's not for any of those. Every human being needs a good nerve supply all of his life. I wish you had a big red light in the middle of your forehead, and every time you suffered one of these subluxations, that thing would light up and say tilt. But since it doesn't, you have no way of knowing when a bone goes out of place. That power, when it's cut down, is cut down so gently and so gradually, you can't even notice. The only way to find out, I'm a chiropractor, and I don't know at this moment if my power is being choked off. And the only way to find out is for me to go to another chiropractor and have my spine examined regularly. <coughs> Not when you're sick. One of the most stupid things we've ever done in the United States is to involve ourselves in crisis therapy. We ignore our health all of our lives until it's too late, and then we go to some doctor and look for a miracle. And if he won't give us one, we blame him and we go to somebody else. By the time you get to a doctor of any kind, it may already be too late. What about all these friends you talk to about chiropractic? And they say, oh, well, if I ever get sick, I'll go and see your doctor. And 20 or 30 years go by, and they're never sick enough. And then suddenly they wake up one morning, and they have terminal cancer. And they say, what can your chiropractic do for that? Well, it could have prevented it. That's for one thing. Every sudden illness, was preceded by years of the power being cut off. And if at any time along the way that power had been turned back on, it would have given a better chance at health and life. It is a sin and a crime to restrict chiropractic to sick people. Everybody needs his spine examined regularly. You have to be out of your mind to want to walk around for 20 years with a power cut off, and then I've seen this, you come to a chiropractor and you say, I've been coming for six months now, how come I don't feel any better? After walking around this way for 40 years. You know what I say? Why don't you get in the car and go home and bring in your children or your grandchildren? So 30 or 40 years from now, they're not in the same rotten mess that you're in looking for a miracle. There are no miracles. Protect your health while you have it. Don't be silly enough to let it get lost and then look for a miracle to get it back. The United States of America is one of the sickest nations on earth, certainly the sickest of all the industrialized nations, partly because of the pollution in the air we breathe, the pollution in the water we drink, the pollution in the food we eat or the chemicals we eat instead of food, and don't forget the worst pollution of all, the pollution of the human bloodstream by drugs and medications. There can be no health unless it be natural. Health is your God-given birth. It's yours to protect, to keep. Once it's lost, it may be too late to get it back.